What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Vince and today we are back with another reaction. Today we're back into Despicable Liars. Oh. Now if there's one thing I know for certain. What? Huh? For certain. What? Wow. For certain. Certain. Oh. If there's one thing I know for certain as a 100% scientifically proven fact, it is that I have no clue what a despicable liar is. Bruh. Which is crazy because I be lying. With that being said, I'm not sure if I fall into this category of the liar community. I don't know because the only despicable I have knowledge of is despicable me. You know that movie with the minions and that tall egg body long leg plant group looking thing. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. His long leg self. The evil villain dude. I only know that. That's the only despicable I know. Oh, let me ask Siri real quick. <clears throat> Siri, what is the definition of despicable? Despicable means deserving hatred and contempt. Did I see that movie right? Like, I, I, is it called this people with me deserving hatred or a contempt? That seemed kind of dark for a chill children movie. My little brother watched that movie. Are you sure? Nigga, obviously I am sure. My brain is literally fucking Google. I don't get things wrong. I'm not a dumb ass like you. Don't ever put me on your fucking level again. I'm a despicable liar. <laughs> but I don't know. We sneak into this video and see a bunch of despicable liars and see if I myself fall into the category of a despicable liar. So let's get into it. Let's go. Last year, Kate McClure's seemingly heartwarming story went viral. She said she was stranded on the outskirts of Philadelphia when homeless veteran Johnny Bobbitt Jr. spent his last $20 to buy her gas. Okay. I'm down 95 and <laughs> ran out of gas. So I pulled over on to the side of the road. You know, she, she needed the help. She took the help. With the title Paying It Forward, the GoFundMe page coordinated by McClure and her then-boyfriend, Mark D'Amico, raised more than $400,000. Dang! It's like winning the lottery. But the ruse unraveled in a shocking twist. The entire campaign was predicated on a lie. Authorities say it was all a coordinated scam from the start. The cover photo on the page staged they say all three were in on the elaborate hoax. D'Amico, McClure, and Bobbitt conspired to pass off a fake, feel-good story that would compel donors to contribute to their cause. McClure and Bobbitt both pled guilty in federal court. D'Amico has pleaded not guilty. Colorado mom Kelly Renee Turner's Wait, bucket that's it? list for Hold her on, hold on now. What type of monster is that, dude? That's a diabolical plan, first of all. These all are crazy. They must have just woke up one day and was like, ah, ah, I'm tired of being broke. I can't take it anymore. Whoa. I'm not going to lie. I feel your pain. I be thinking like that every day. It's today the day I snap and be like, huh, I'm going to go get my money. Huh. Yeah, I be thinking like that sometimes. But regardless of the fact, they didn't lose their mind. This is like a pure example of just crazy. You thought of this plan. You wrote it up and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make a fake story of how I got lost in the middle of nowhere, ran out of gas, and then just happened to stumble upon you, the disabled veteran, and gave me your last $20. Let's make up that story and then they'll donate you money. And we'll just get so much money and we'll split it three ways, $400,000. Oh, we're rich now. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh, why would you think of that? Terminally ill daughter went viral in 2017. Her story even made its way to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Seven-year-old Olivia Gaunt died from what her mother claimed was a rare disease. No. And we don't know how much longer she has. But authorities now say it was all a lie. The first child dies. The mother then induces illness on yet another child so she can continue this fraud continue getting the attention. Turner was indicted on two counts of murder what? and 11 other charges, including receiving fraudulent Medicaid payments of more than half a million dollars and theft associated with a GoFundMe account. Several years later, it was told to me that the cells had developed into cancer. Wait. And so we- Dude, they, they skipping them too fast, bro. That last one, I want to talk about that one too. My guy. What is wrong with her, bro? It's really parents like that. That's that, um, what's her name? Uh... Oh! Gypsy 
Gypsy. Oh. Gypsy. Her mama was doing that too, injecting her with all types of stuff. Like, where were the doctors doing? Like, are the doctors prescribing this medicine? What are they doing? Is she getting this medicine illegally or is she just giving her daughter drugs? How did nobody know that this lady was purposely getting her children sick? That is some crazy stuff. You're messed up in the head, first of all. I don't know what it's like to be a girl, but I know for darn sure it's it, it, it ain't a good feeling to carry a, a human being for nine months in your stomach. Oh my god! And then go through that to just kill them for attention? That is weird. Or keep them sick? You have some mental problems. I'm not gonna lie. You need to be studied. Several years later, it was told to me that the cells had developed into cancer. And so we had to do more procedures and treatment um, that time. She and went on time, live television. I, I lose my hair. And it was a very scary, emotional time in my life. You said you lost your hair, but you didn't. You, you shaved your head. In the beginning, I shaved my head to where my hair was very short. Yeah. Why? You, you put our producer on the phone uh, with a nurse, Sharon Hodges. Yes. She treated you? Well, she was one of the nurses there. She told the producer that you went through cancer treatments several months of chemo in 2012. Because when you called Sharon Hodges on your cell phone, mm -hmm. the name Jenny came up in the screen. No. Well, yeah, because I've known, I know Sharon. But you have Sharon in your cell phone under Jenny? No. She called red-handed. I called Jenny's phone. I said, is this, is this Sharon? She said, no, this, she said, this is Jenny Carey. I was like, oh, I need to talk to Sharon. Why would Sharon be with Jenny? Because we were all friends. Does that not make sense? No. <laughs> Okay. This is embarrassing. Go back to that hospital and asked for Sharon Hodges. Okay. And they said there's no Sharon Hodges that works there. Oh. When you put our producer on the phone this morning speaking to Sharon Hodges, they were actually speaking to Jenny. No, that still wasn't Jenny. Who, who was it? Her name is Sharon. What? What, what was she doing at Jenny's house? <laughs> they are neighbors now what it seems so coincidental she said she had bro. just months bro what did she even get out of that lie Bruh. like you're caught like at some point you can't just keep adding on lies it's gonna get confusing and then you're gonna be like huh you don't even know what you're lying about anymore like at this point you just look dumb especially if your lies not making sense if you're gonna keep adding lies let me give y'all a little liar one-on-one -on -one. what if you gonna keep adding lies on something make sure lies kind of you know what i'm saying neatly stack and neatly just combine and just smooth and run just very like huh it's straight, it's clean. Make sure it's like that. I'm not trying to breed no psychopaths out here. I'm just letting y'all know. If y'all need to get out of something crazy, like, hey, give me your money or I'm going to take everything from you. What? What? That didn't make sense. <laughs> give me your money or I'm going to shoot you. All right. Hey, hey, man. I don't have no money. I just got robbed down the street on 175 South Halter Street. I know the address. They let me keep my shoes, but if you want them, you can have them. Lies. I got a bunch of money in my pocket. Wow. <laughs> now I just lost my shoes. Come on now. I'm big brain plays, big brain. They can't get past me. But regardless of the fact, I, I had a thought while I was watching that Dr. Phil one, right? Um, y'all think I can get on that show? No, I'm not, not saying I want to. I'm just saying like, if I really caught up there like, <laughs> I'm crazy. Dr. Phil, I need to talk to you. I eat people's toes. Huh? Like, y'all think he'd be like, oh, let me get him on here. And then I walked on there like this. <laughs> Would y'all be ashamed of me? Yes. It's to live. Isn't there any other way to get his attention besides tell him you're dying of cancer? Oh I'm the mother God. of his children, and he wouldn't call me. Jessica showed him a letter from a doctor. It said she was dying. Did the ruse work? Did he come back? No. He insisted that I moved him right away. Oh. So it worked. Mm -hmm. The lie. Mm -hmm. She cut off her hair and wore a wig at her wedding to make it look like she'd had chemotherapy. And get this, did you pretend to go to cancer treatment? Oh, uh, maybe or? What, like three yeah. or four times. He's still mass? with her? Yeah. She would have her mother drop her off at the doctor's office. What would you go do? Nothing. Just sit there. When people began donating things for the wedding, Mike was touched and called the newspaper, suggesting they do a story about the community's generosity. He goes, hey, guess what? There's going to be an article about our wedding. And I was like, in my, to myself, 
My inner monologue, I'm like, oh my God, I cannot get out of this. The article prompted even more donations. You got a free wedding dress. You got free rings. Those are all You got fun. a free honeymoon. You got free airfare to Aruba for the For honeymoon. nothing. Well, it wasn't free. Um, Flowers, hair and makeup for you and seven bridal attendants. But even as she sobbed her vows, Jessica was still lying. As I become your wife, I want you to know the day I'm no longer physically here, I will always kiss you goodnight. Even during this lovely wedding, you're still- Y'all, she is crazy. Come on, bro, dude. How are you sitting here crying, talking about, <laughs> like, you, you, I think you really believe you're gonna die in a couple months, and no darn well you're not. If that made sense, but I don't care if it didn't. Y'all get the gist. This lady is stupid. Oh. Like, first of all, like I'm not gonna lie. At some point, you gotta be like, hey, uh, uh don't accept the rings. Don't accept the money. Hey, hey, in the background, you gotta do something. Hey, we can't take this. Sorry, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't feel comfortable. Make up something. You're just taking everybody money and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like that's how I kind of feel weird about donating sometimes. You know what I'm saying? They're like giving somebody money on the street that's begging. You know, because a lot of times. They be trying to fool you. I didn't see it happen. I didn't see, hey, I'm not gonna say what race they were, but it wasn't my race. Hey, I didn't see them out there holding the signs, talking about I have 12 kids, I, we just need a little money to feed them. They got their kids out there. Meanwhile, I give them $2, I see them go back to their car, they're in a BMW better than my car. What? You didn't need my $2, that's not even gonna give you a gallon of gas in that car. What are you doing? You just out here finessing me. I, like, I don't know. Like, that's why I'd be hesitant to give somebody money. Or the homeless people that be on drugs, I'd be hesitant to give them money too because they'd be like, hmm, no, I don't want to feed into their drug addiction. I really don't get some food for this with this, you know? And one way to get around this is to give them food. And if they don't accept your food, they are most likely on drugs. If they say, I get that on my face, I need the heroin. Uh, what? Come on, bro. Something's not right. Lying. Mm hmm. During the vows, yeah, because that was part of, we decided to write personal vows, and I had to mention that. Called the doctor. Why is he with her still? Gave them her name and her social security, and they asked for the letter, so I scanned it and emailed it. And they said, what is this? And I said, oh boy. The good news? His new bride wasn't dying of cancer. The bad news? She never had been. The whole thing was a hoax. So what do you feel at that point? Anger? I was enraged. Once he knew his wife would live, Mike dumped her and made another call to the newspaper. The public punishment began immediately. Oh. Turns out she's perfectly healthy, and now she's been indicted for duping the community. Tabloids, television, and internet scorning her as a shameful sicko, a gold-digging bridezilla. Jessica traded her white dress for an orange jumpsuit when she was arrested and spent 50 days in jail. But things are looking up for her now. Her husband Mike has taken her back. Why? I tried to hate her. Just, it was an, it was an, it was an act. You can't help who you love. So how many of those people we see at your wedding dancing and drinking and celebrating? How many of those people do you still speak to? None. This woman was being tried for a DUI in court. As it went along, it was discovered that the information provided by the cop who arrested her was questionable. I don't know what was going on. All I know was crying. The officer said he didn't ask her to do a breathalyzer test because no one from the sheriff's office was available to do it. Even so, he indicated she had an unlawful blood or breath alcohol wow. level, which automatically suspended her license for six months. The evidence showed there are breath test operators always available to give a breath test, and that this officer said that there is not, which is not true. But you did not know what her blood or breath alcohol was at all, did you? That's correct. Were you drunk? Oh no, excuse me, I'm sorry. The jury found her guilty, but Seminole County Judge Fred Schott threw out the verdict and went on a tirade accusing the officer of lying and even of maybe breaking the law. The DMV what? is in charge of suspending licenses. Yeah, when, when the officers the lie office. to them. Correct, Your Honor, and that's why Patriot... Then I want you taking him up on perjury. Your Honor. Will you take him up for he perjury? Did, he admitted it was a mistake, Your Honor. No, but he lied. He lied on a sworn Absolutely citation. Absolutely not, Your Honor, and that is... That is not true. I'm dismissing. I'm dismissing. You cannot summarily dismiss the charge without making a motion for us to be able to respond charge. to. No, I'm Will dismissing you? the charge. So take it up on appeal with him lying about it. The case should have never been done. 
Never. Young Jazz. Hey, lay, I know lawyers just be doing their job, but they be making them seem like some of the most slimiest people on earth. You know what I'm saying? She defending this dude that didn't lie on some random lady for no reason. Gotta be racist. I'm just throwing that out there. Oh but my she God. defending him because she has to. I understand that. But it just seemed like just so slimy to me. Like, if you know he wrong, I know he paid you to be like, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's to say he not wrong. It's just still weird to me. I guess lawyers are, is that why lying is a good job for lawyers or liars get that job easily? I don't know. But anyway, regardless of the fact, that is some scary stuff. How do you even get out of that situation? Like, do you appeal that? Like, you know, like you can't drive no more. You can't go to work. He better get some type of repercussion. He better lose his job. She better get paid. You know what I'm saying? Double time. She better get at least 100000 for her troubles. And... You know, he should never be a cop again, period. Like, that is weird. You imagine you just drive and it's a normal day. You coming from work, you've been at work all day, didn't work the nine hour shift, and you just driving home, you sleepy, can't wait to get in your bed, and just, ah. But right before you get home, you see, woo woo, flashing lights behind you. You said, oh my God, what did I do now? I'm driving the speed limit, my seatbelt's on. Uh, what they gonna get me on my window tent now? My window tent too dark? Come on, bro, just leave me alone. But anyway, regardless of the fact, you pull over, and the officer gets out and says, you were swerving, huh? What? I was swerving? I'm gonna need you to get out the car, sir. Bruh. So now you got the car, and <clears throat> he says, I smell alcohol in your breath. You say, sir, I don't even drink alcohol. What are you talking about? He said, no, nah, I know what I smell. Get in the back of my car, and you go to jail. And he writes oh, some fake report and say you didn't blow a breathalyzer, took the DUI test where you walked in a straight line and all that. He didn't did all his lying. For what? Because his life sucks? So I'm not going to lie. He needs to be beat up publicly. Young Jasmine shot dead in a drive-by shooting that hooked the nation, mainly because of a description of the gunman as given the day of the shooting by Jasmine's mother and her sisters. Those sisters again said that, that that's exactly what the shooter looked like. But we now know this wasn't a hate crime, at least racial prejudice wasn't the driver, as investigators arrested and charged two black men in connection with Jasmine's killing. Of course. The man in the sketch the Harris County Sheriff's Office now believes is a witness who was driving this red truck, speeding in an attempt to flee. So how'd this happen? What led LaPortia Washington to believe that they were shot because they're black? And let me touch on that. And when we went to the hospital, that wasn't crossing her mind. Buffin says once word about the shooting became news, it went viral. From there, activists swarmed her family, listening to LaPortia and her daughter's description of a white gunman, telling them this was likely a hate crime. We, tr we, we, we trust me, we tried, we was in distress. We apologize. We apologize. Despite the arrests of two men identified as suspects, Cantrell says as recent as today, there have been threatening comments on her Facebook page because of a link drawn between her uncle, Robert Cantrell, and the sketch the Harris County Sheriff's Office released last Thursday. Activist Sean King, with a million followers, spread it even farther. Haley, who fears for her uncle and her family's safety, wants this to spread too. He is innocent of this terrible crime. Man wrongly accused of killing a seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes found dead in a jail cell. <laughs> oh! No, oh, y'all making us look bad. Y'all are making us look back. I'm not gonna lie. On behalf of the black community, I would say um, they're not black no more. No, no, I'm gonna speak for all of us on that one. What are they talking about? I don't know, like, if we just didn't get the whole case or, like, why they made up this whole hate crime story. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, it was some hoodlums. Look at them. Like, you, we seen the picture of these these thugs. They mug shots, bro. What are they robbing me for? And they killed a little girl. That's, like, I'm not gonna lie. That makes me so mad. That makes me so mad because these thugs don't have no morals. Why are you killing kids? You know what I'm saying? If you want to kill somebody that that's in the gang life, I still think it's wrong, but hey, that's part of the contract they signed when they say, huh, I'm a thug, a gang member, that's the contract, you know what I'm saying? You gotta take that risk of being, you know, an op, or somebody's op and shot, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you you rolled your dice, nah, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you made your bed, now you gotta land it. 
And I, I really don't know what was going on. I'm actually pretty confused on that whole case. I was really watching and trying to pay attention, but it was making me mad. I'm not sure why they made that up. And, you know, I think it's weird that people send hate to other people not knowing the full story. Hey, they hear one thing and just believe it's true. I don't know. That's kind of weird to me. They don't do no research. They don't go in the back end and say, okay, um, why did this happen? They don't do none of that. They just instantly go to the comment section and say, mm, oh, you're weird. I hate you. Mm, oh, I hope you get ran over by a car. Mm, mm, your grandma's ugly. You're like, come on, bro. They, they, they do random stuff like that. And I think it's weird. So, um, what I can say though, after watching this video and seeing all these cases is that I am not a despicable liar. I'm not that type of liar. I am, these type of liars are crazy. They be lying to hurt people. Like these are liars that are sent to prison. <laughs> I wish I would lie about something like that. Me, me get in trouble with the law? I'm not lying. I'm, <laughs> Jonathan Kaminga. Um, yeah, he was the one that robbed the store. Uh, Louis Bridgefield. Oh, yeah, he was the getaway driver. I'm telling on everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to end well. So, I don't know, man. Y'all let me know in the comments which one was the craziest to y'all. Do y'all know any despicable liars? Are you a despicable liar? Let me know down below. And hey, y'all know, if y'all enjoyed the video too, make sure to subscribe. We're on the way to 10,000 subscribers. And hit that like button if you enjoy it because it just makes sense to hit the like button if you like the video. And even if you didn't like it, just hit it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I just want you to hit the like button. It makes sense. I still be lying. We gone.